Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Let's Play of The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I don't- my tongue started to get twisted there, but I'm pretty sure what I said eventually ended up correct. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and jump right on into a challenge. We're really starting to make some headway in getting these challenges done, so we're gonna go ahead and do the host, I guess. I don't know why I'm going from the bottom up. It probably would have made more sense to go from the top down. But we're gonna go ahead and start off immediately with a controller disconnect. I guess my efforts at completing or i guess fixing that issue off stream or i don't i always say that now like i'm so ingrained or like streaming is so ingrained in me now instead of off camera i always say off stream which is kind of weird i don't know i guess you know a year of streaming straight will do that to you i obviously like before when videos were the only thing that i did off camera was like my go-to saying for something I did that wasn't recorded but now off stream is so I should probably check our items it looks like we got mulligan and I really don't I think that other item is the one that like when you take damage spiders spawn I could be wrong but we got Ewa's passage I do not know what this does but I'm pretty sure this is one of those fancy runes that are new in the Binding of Isaac Rebirth I haven't really gotten to deal too much with those runes yet. So hopefully we'll be able to figure out what it was, does, in this episode. I'd like to use it now, but actually I think we might have used this before. I think a wise is the one that like opens up a, a trap door. Yeah, whatever. Like I wasn't going to use it anyway, so I thought I'd just go ahead and try it. Actually, you know, if I'd been smart, I could have probably taken that down to like the depths one or something and actually i wonder how that would work actually i'm not even really sure if this goes to mom this could go to the heart for all i know or mom's heart but anyway if i'd used it on the depths too i wonder how that would have worked i don't think it would have completed the challenge because i'm pretty sure you got to touch the trophy for the challenge to be complete so it's probably for the best that we didn't mess around with that because it probably would have gotten messed up in the end. And I just realized that Dingle started off with like less health and then I looked down at our trinkets and we have the tick. Which because the Polaroid doesn't work the same way in this game, that's actually not such a bad thing. The tick I mean. Because, I, wow, I'm just going to take all the damage in the world I guess. But the tick doesn't do, or isn't as bad I should say, as it is or as it was in the original because it does a lot of damage starting out a boss fight if that makes sense i'm trying really hard not to die here by the way i don't know if that's clear fortunately we got a couple of hearts here i really thought we were gonna die to dingle which would have been just an absolute travesty it would have been like a three minute death and so far in this series i haven't died yet which is probably due to end any time now but i was hoping that it wouldn't be on dingle within three minutes of a run and so far we've kept that dream alive so we're gonna go and use these pills, I guess. Health down, not what we want. Puberty, not what we want. Bombs are key, I guess. Doesn't really change all that much. And full health. So, pretty much nothing out of that boss fight. If I'd used that trap door that opened up from it was, that probably would have been a better deal than taking all of that damage from Dingle and then getting a health down. So, I guess when I go back to the past, I'll change that and go with the other path that I could have taken. You know, arcades, speaking of arcades, or I guess I didn't speak of it, but it is right there. I don't really use arcades all that much. It's probably something that I should use more, but like, I'm not sure what the meta for the arcade is. Like, I'm not sure what you should go into an arcade expecting to get out of it, if that makes sense. And really, I guess seven coins is like that enough to make use of the arcade? I don't really know. So rather than going in there and making a fool of myself, I guess I will just not go in there and hopefully not make a fool of myself but what if not going in there is what makes myself a fool oh man i should have used the hangman in there not like we can't just go back after this but we should be able to grab those bombs which is that worth it it probably is so we're just gonna go and grab these bombs and maybe a secret room could be here i was kind of hoping it would be there because in the last episode i pretty sure like every single time we searched for a secret room we didn't find it so i'm kind of glad that we were able to find one here and get i guess some flies which considering the challenge we're doing like i guess that's acceptable although i would have liked something else so we're gonna go in here 
I was hoping for a spirit heart or just something good, but I don't think we really need any of this. We don't even have a space bar item to make use of that battery. The deck of cards could probably be good, but of course we don't have enough coins to buy that, so it's kind of a moot point. So in the last episode, I'm pretty sure we had a tough time with the Gurglings, but it seems like we're doing quite a bit of damage. Actually, we might be doing less damage than we did in the last episode in the Waka Waka Challenge, but considering the method of dealing damage that we had to deal with in that challenge, like I think we're going to have an easier time with this boss fight with our current setup, even with less damage. And I'm pretty sure in the last episode I was like, oh, a damage up is always good, but... While that is true, I, I guess some setups are better with less damage than high damage builds with other setups, if that makes sense. So we're going to get some spiders, I guess. This is like the goat head. I'm pretty sure I've heard what this does is give you like deals with the devil like every time or something. But we picked that up in the last episode, so we're going to pick up a little brimstone, I guess. For a little extra damage, I guess. I don't think we're going to have enough health to really make use of more deal with the devil items or deals with the devil. So I guess it was probably a good idea to not pick up the goat head. Also, I'm not really sure how little brimstone works. Like, I'm not sure if we charge it up ourselves. Looks like it's charged up. So if we let go, I wonder if it'll fire. Yeah, I guess that's how that works, which is kind of cool, I guess. It looks like it's a pretty solid damage up, actually. So I'm kind of glad we picked that up. I don't think we really need to pick any of that up. And by the way, I think I mentioned this before. Here's a Triforce on the floor. I don't really need to go into another Majora's Mask rant. And I probably don't really need to go into another controller rant. Although I would really like to because we're still having controller issues. And this is episode like 7 or something like that. I should probably be on episode like 30 or something by this point. But... I don't know if I explained this before, but we had some pretty insane exams, or I did anyway. I'm sure some of you out there had exams at the same time I did, but I had quite a few exams to study for. And then I had Thanksgiving break, so I didn't really have all that much time to do episodes. But now that we are back, we don't really have that many exams to study for in the immediate future. We should be good to do quite a few episodes. This is actually my third episode I'm recording today. Which, before today, I'm pretty sure I'd never recorded more than one episode in a day. So, this is kind of a step up for me. Like, real YouTubers record more than one episode in a day quite often. And this is something I'm not used to. So, hopefully, these episodes are as good as they would be if I'd just done one in a day. Also, I don't really remember what this does, so I'm just going to stand here. Okay. Apparently, that restarts the floor or something, which gave us our eternal heart, so I guess that was sort of worth it. It doesn't seem like it really did anything that good. Actually, you know, I bet if that were on a regular run, we could have, like, gotten the item room and then re-rolled the floor and gotten another item room, so that might be kind of cool for, like, real runs. Or, you know, non-challenge runs, I should say. Although, like, we were kind of close to the end of the floor, I guess, so, like, it was kind of just a time waste. Especially since, like I was saying, there are no item rooms on the challenge runs, so really just a waste of time, I guess. You know, I should probably go back and, like, just count how many times my controller has disconnected over the first seven episodes, or however many episodes it's been so far. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in, like, the 50 to 100 range at this point. I'd really like to play on the keyboard, or I would be fine playing with the keyboard, but the way my stream setup, or my, like, recording setup is, I can't really do that, unfortunately. In the original Isaac series I did, which I think I only did, like, four episodes of that, so we have cleared the amount that I did for that, I did use the keyboard, but it was really loud, and because of the way my microphone is set up, my mouth was, like, right next to the microphone, and I didn't have a pop filter at the time, so it was, like, crazy loud plosives. Alright, so, do we want to go crazy here? Is that Guppy's Collar? Like, I don't even know. Okay, Guppy's Collar. Do we have another Guppy item? We don't have a Guppy item other than Guppy's Collar. If we had another Guppy item, I would have picked up Nine Lives, but I'm not going to. Because if we'd had another Guppy item before I went in there, like, I would have been able to be Guppy after I picked up those two items. But 
because we wouldn't like actually turn into Guppy picking up that item, I'm not going to bother because I'm pretty sure that would actually hurt our chances of completing the game at this point. Alright, so I'm not going to bother playing this. I could probably get some like keys and stuff out of this, but I don't really think we're going to need that. And rest assured, when I do get back to like normal runs, we're going to be playing a little more conservatively, I guess. Like, I'm, it's not like I'm trying to speed run these challenges or whatever, but like, they are kind of easy, so I might as well just sort of get through them as fast as possible. Because dragging them along is probably not in our best interest, especially since what I really want to do is get back to the main game. I don't know how common of a sentiment that is, by the way. I don't know if, like, I'm the only one that doesn't really like challenges all that much. But regardless, I would like to get back to regular runs. I'd really like to try out some of the other characters, by the way. I don't think I've unlocked Azazel yet. Or Azazel. I really still don't know how to pronounce it. But... I would really like to try him out because I've heard he's like really overpowered because I'm pretty sure he starts with Flight and Brimstone. Like that is insane. I can't believe that's like a starting character or like a character you can start as has that like insane amount of like benefit. There's got to be some sort of like drawback to it. I find it hard to believe Edmund would put such a an OP character in. Alright, so I guess should we buy the ladder? I don't know. Might as well. If we don't get flight, maybe there's something we could use the ladder for later on. If I hadn't bought it, you would know, like, there would be, like, a, a room with, like, infinite eternal hearts that I wouldn't be able to get to, if only I had a ladder. That's just how the RNG gods treat me sometimes. I really thought I was going to take damage there, but I didn't, so I'm pretty pleased with that. You know, I don't really know if there's any benefit to taking out the nubs in that sort of situation, because it's not like they can hit you from all the way over there. And it seems like if there are nubs already on the, like, playing field or, like, the, the battlegrounds, he won't spawn more. So I'm not really sure what the best course of action there would be. It seems kind of a, a moot point now because we are about to win. I'm pretty sure I've used the phrase moot point, like, eight times today. I don't know where the number eight came from either. So we got the pentagram, which is really good. I was hoping we'd get a deal with the devil, but the pentagram is a really good item to get as well. I'm not sure if it's as much of a damage up as it was in the first, or the Flash version, but I remember it being really good in the original. And I don't think it was a boss, or like, if it was a boss, like, room item in the original, like, I don't think it was as common as it is now. Like, I seem to be getting it pretty much every run, which is really good, because I always like damage ups. Like, you never, like, those runs where you're like, dying for damage and you never get it those are never really all that fun unless you like triumph and win anyway but when you're like stuck with no damage those runs can be kind of frustrating so it's always nice to have a, a damage up here and there and so far in the series damage has really not been an issue which i'm really pleased with also i'm not really sure if using little brimstone as like your primary damage source is really the way to go but that's sort of what I'm doing here. Also, I'm not really sure if Little Brimstone is affected by damage ups. Hopefully it is, because that would be awesome. If it's not, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Oh my, I was trying so hard not to take damage there. I really want to get that no damage achievement for, or challenge, I guess, done for the depths. Which I'm not really sure if you can do that in challenges in this game, but I'm pretty sure you could in the original. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and pick up that. We have only, okay, if we'd had two guppy items, I would have gone in that curse room. But since we only have one, I'm not going to bother wasting our spirit heart, because if we're careful, we might still be able to get a deal with the devil on this floor. And you know what? I bet the deal with the devil, if we get one, is going to have a guppy item. So, like, we could have become guppy, like, 18 times in this run. We're going to go ahead and pick up this key, I guess. Like I was saying before, there's not that much reason to have keys, like so many keys on a challenge run, I guess, because like there's not any item rooms or anything to use keys on, except for like the shops, which I've gone to the shop mostly, I guess, on this run. I probably haven't gone to a few shops. That's another thing. Sometimes I just like forget to go to shops. Like item rooms are my favorite rooms in the entire game. The other rooms are sort of like backseat rooms to me, which is probably not the best way to play, but like... I haven't died yet, so until I, like, start to get destroyed by the game, I guess it's not such a bad thing that I don't go to every room all the time. I'd love to pick up that, because I've never seen that before, and I'd love to see what that is. Also, I think this might be a tinted rock. 
No. The tinted rocks in this game are definitely harder to see than they were in the Flash version, which is probably good because in the original they sort of just like stuck out like really easily. But that sort of like has the side effect of me missing tinted rocks or blowing up rocks that like I thought were tinted rocks but weren't. So I'll try to be a little more careful in the future, but especially on the depths, it seems like everything sort of has like a blue tint anyway, so it's probably a futile effort to look for tinted rocks, unless unless it isn't, then I should probably just get good. I'm really glad we picked up Little Brimstone because it's making quick work of everything that we've come across so far, except for the pause button glitch, or just the pause glitch, I guess. I'm not really pushing the pause button for that to happen. Hopefully. Oh, wow. Okay, well, there's a tinted rock. Also, I just looked up at my life. I just remember when we got Guppy's collar. It said eternal life question mark when we got it. And it says now that we have one question mark life. So I wonder if it's like a, like a chance that you'll come back to life every time you die. Or like the first time you die or something. I don't really know. But that's kind of disconcerting to not know if we have an extra life. But I probably should just not die in the first place. That would probably just be the best course of action. Alright, so we got another ball of bandages. It looks like this is Bandage Girl from Meat Boy, so that's kind of cool how there's a, you know, the Meat Boy familiar and a Bandage Girl familiar. Well, there's our Guppy that we could have become if I picked up nine lives, but who knows if I would have made it this far if I had picked that up. So, I'm not going to pick up either of these because I don't remember if you pick up a, a heart... Or, like, if you pick up a deal with the devil, if it will take away your eternal heart or not. So, I'm just not even going to bother. I probably, just for, like, information's sake, should have probably picked up one of those. Just to, you know, know if it takes away your eternal heart or not. But, I'd like to just kind of, like, finish this challenge without taking too many risks. And that would have been a risk that, while it might have been worth it, if it turned out badly, like, it could have been really bad depending on how much damage we take on this floor. Which, being a damage, I'm kind of surprised we haven't taken any damage on this room yet from either the spikes or the dingles here. Wow, I thought Little Brimstone was going to fire there, but it didn't. So I'm kind of proud of myself. Did not take any damage on that floor, or that room. But this room, I guess we're not going to take any damage on this room either. I thought for sure we were going to take damage. But we're not. I almost walked right into those spikes, even though we just came out of this room, so I probably should have remembered. No matter, though. We do have quite a bit of health, so I'm not really worried that we're gonna... We're gonna die, I guess. Although these bat enemies... Okay, well, I thought maybe we would be able to squeeze through there without taking any damage, but unfortunately not. But those bat enemies are really fast, or like they charge at you... And they're kind of hard to dodge, for me anyway. Gotta take note of that and get good at those enemies. These enemies are really easy, though. I never really thought those enemies were, like, placed properly. Like, they're really easy to dodge, especially for, like, the devs. The only time they're really an issue is if they're sort of, like, paired with any other enemies that might make you have to dodge a lot. In which case, you're probably going to walk in the path of one of those enemies eventually. Otherwise, though, if the room is only those enemies, like, you probably should not take damage whatsoever. I don't know why I thought I was walking into my boss room. Like, my brain was just ready to talk about the mom's heart boss fight, but we're not even close to the heart boss. Or not the mom's heart boss fight, just the mom boss fight. Not anywhere near that yet, as far as I can tell. I guess I'm just ready for this run to be over. Or it's not that I'm ready for it to be over, it's just like, it's pretty much over at this point. Let's go ahead and take this pill, I guess. Is that like the first pill we've found in the entire run so far? I think it honestly might be. And honestly, so far in my Binding of Isaac Rebirth career, really none of my pills have been all that good. So I'm kind of wary to be taking pills lately. So how to jump? Uh, okay. Whoa. That's really cool, actually. Also, I like how the cover of this book is a Mario game or like the Mario Bros on the N60 the NES I should say that's embarrassing I should probably know that that is an N60 I, there we go again an NES cartridge and not an N64 cartridge 
So the mom's heart boss fight, or the mom boss fight, was not in that direction. Completely the wrong direction, I guess. If I cared, I would play that judgment, but I don't think we're going to be needing to waste any time on that. You know, for all the speed running it seems like I'm doing through these challenges, I should probably be doing the boss rushes more, but the boss rushes, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but like, unless we're going to be moving on, and also unless we have like a really overpowered run or something, like I don't think I'm going to be really doing the boss rushes all that often, because they just take forever. And like I said, if the challenge is going to end at mom anyway, like there's really not that much of a, a point in doing the boss rush because the challenge is going to end immediately after that anyway. So we're going to go ahead and take quick work of these, or make quick work of these enemies. Fight brimstone with brimstone, I always say. Alright, so we can't get rid of the tick, otherwise I would have taken that for poison damage on mom here. You know, the pause thing that's been happening in this run, or since the beginning of the series, hasn't really made too much of a damper on this run so far. Which is nice, because I don't know if I've mentioned this either, but as far as commentary goes, like, it's really distracting when, like, you're talking about something, and all of a sudden the game is paused. Like, it wouldn't seem like it would be, or maybe it would, I don't really know. But it is kind of weird, like, you're talking, and then all of a sudden the game's paused, and what you were talking about is kind of no longer applicable because it's not even on screen anymore so if the commentary seemed kind of disjointed so far in the series like I'd like to blame it on that also I just haven't done let's play videos in a while so maybe that could be it as well regardless we are going to be destroying mom very shortly here if I was smart I would stay down towards the bottom like all the other pro binding of Isaac players and just sort of hit mom's hand as it pops out but I like to be a little adventurous, especially when we're going to be completing this challenge. Or, like, the challenge is going to be over when this boss fight is over anyway, so... It's not like we really need to plan for the future or anything. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this. I don't even care about the boss rush. We're just going to go ahead and complete this challenge. That was the host challenge, and we unlocked Tech 5, or point .5, or something. I don't know if that was, like, Tech point .5, or Tech 5, and like, number 5. Regardless, we've completed the host challenge. I wonder how many challenges we have left. Quite a few, probably. We actually only have five left that we can do right now. I don't think I want to do the purest for a while, so we might, like, complete these four and get back to regular runs. Because, of course, like, a lot of the challenges don't even unlock until you unlock certain items in the game. So, as soon as we're done with the challenges that we can do, I will probably be moving back into the main game. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, and I hope to see you guys back for the next episode.